We'll start off today here with some red and white, very light, subtle, kind of a pink color. I'll probably transition into more of a peach tone down here, but let me get some of this in first because I don't want green. So I do like having a, a red when I do my skies. If I'm going to have blue over here and yellow here, I want to have some sort of a pink just a little bit to help me out. Just keeps things a little safer. It is actually going to be a very much a gray sky. Of course, we're doing a seascape and the and the canvas there divided by a piece of tape. And before we go too far, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. It's always fun to see what you're doing. So use the information there on the screen to share your painting. I'll put it in the next video if I see it in time. I've got a just a light gray mixed up here. There it is right there. It's got a little blue touch, a little bit of a blue feel to it, but not so much that it's intense. You know, I, I still want it to look gray and stormy. And I do have some uh, up here. I've got my clear gel and white, but down here is dry for the most part. Think about it. A cloud, you know, is soft and a rock is not. So up in the sky, you do want to you do want to blend. But down here, there, you really don't. <laughs> Nobody wants a blended rock. That's called mud. We're not interested in mud today. The sky is going to be a little bit different than normal. You know, I mean, it's not it's not a different technique, certainly. It's got this one big cloud that's rolling through. At least that's what I've got planned. Who knows if I stick to my plan? But if I do stick to my plan, I've got <laughs> I've got one, one cloud going through the sky like this. Now, as I go through toward the left, I do want to get a little more blue so that it's warmer in the middle and, and cooler on the edges. Oh, that's fancy. That's very, very fancy. Somebody's going to pay extra for that. Yeah. So you can just scrub in. That's the way I do my clouds when I paint them uh, with a filbert brush. I just set the brush down and scrub. That's all it takes. And then very, very little blending is required when you do it this way. And tell you the truth, it's not uncommon for me to, to not even blend the skies out. Just leave them the way they are and let that texture just be part of the painting. Now I've got just a peach color and I'm going to run this peach color around the bottom of my clouds, trying not to touch too much of my cloud there. And my peach color is uh, made with yellow ochre because that that won't turn green quite as fast. And then to blend it, you can do just about anything you want. You can even take something like a fan brush, just something clean and just pull it out. Because it really well, it just doesn't matter. We don't really need that much. I'm not making too much of this today. I'm just going to do a little bit. A little bit of blending, call it good. Maybe darken those clouds one shade. You think that would look good? I'm going to darken up just a little bit of this cloud here. We're using a detail brush. And that way, and this is going to be it. I'm, I'm not planning, at least. I'm not planning to, to do any blending after this. So whatever brush strokes I leave in, I'm going to leave in because I just think that'll give it a more of a painted look, not so flat. And I, and I think for a sky that is so simple as this one that we're painting today, I really just think that that will make a big difference to the painting. Now I'm going to drop in another little mountain here. You see I did this light one then went a little darker, dropping in this one now. And of course it's just basically the sky color. You know what? It just doesn't need to stand out that much from the sky. So there's another little mountain island thing, land mass, whatever, right there. Okay, that's good. Not too, not too bumpy. There, that's good. All right. And then of course, as they come forward, not only will they get darker, but they'll, they'll begin to have some more color to them. I may have several layers in this whole area. One of these layers is going to be way up here. It's going to come pretty straight down. Yeah, maybe even like that. Good, kind of cut that one off. So anyway, I'll mess around with this some more. And then maybe one last one. You know what I need to do while we're here? Pull that tape off. There we go. So now I've got this teal color here and it's mixed loosely. I do have some red, again, mixed loosely and there's not all of it has red, but I'm going to use this to underpaint just the back kind of area. You can see I've done a basic sketch here. And that basic sketch really makes a difference because see, then I know actually where to go and where to put my color. Now I've got to have some sort of a 
purple in the background because I've got purple in the sky. So we know that has to be purple. There we go. That'll work. Now it wouldn't hurt actually to go ahead and fill in some of our foamy areas. Let me make a slightly different color. The green is good and we may use some of that green foam, but I want a little more of a purple foam. There, I don't, you know, I don't know if you can even tell the difference, but I can. <laughs> there, then up, it's gonna come up and crash here. There, that's really, really good. We're gonna need, this is laid on, especially here, a little bit too thick, so we're going to, even if I forget to tell you that I've done it or something like that, I'm probably gonna take all this, wipe this off with a shop towel. So just make a note of that. You can use a rag, but I would not use a paper towel. <laughs> that, that paper towel fiber just disintegrates and it gets in your painting. It's very hard to pick it out, and you only have to do it once before you learn that uh, it's not the thing to do. Yeah, see, that's even a little darker than what I'm gonna lighten that up. And there's the eye of the wave, but the splash is a little bit unique today. It kind of travels a long way there. Yeah, something like this. I don't know. We'll blend a lot of that back. And then the eye of the wave today is actually not very bright. It's not too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and get it in right now. They're fairly subtle in color. Now I'm going to drag in some highlight here to what's going to be a large, large background waves, really. I'm not doing a whole lot to this one yet. Although, see, it's fairly dry. I didn't do, put a lot of paint right in this area. So I might just go in here and I don't know, adjust that wave some so that it's more interesting. Yeah, that is more interesting. I can do that. I can actually take this little spot right here, although maybe just a little too early. Go ahead and begin to pull some of this over. All right, let's just not mess with that. <laughs> Let's, let's come right over here and continue. Pull in a few more lines. And then once you're done with that, you just wipe your brush out so there's not a lot of extra paint in it. And then simply grab the back end and pull it into the rest of the wet paint that's back here. And then you move on and do your next wave. It's just as easy as that, really. I mean, straightforward. Now, with the quarter inch brush, I'm coming back and I'm adding my darks in. I find it easier to add darks in over the lights versus trying to come in with a lot of, you know, this punchy dark and then trying to highlight over it's much harder. So I'm getting my, especially down in here maybe, getting my darks in. Of course, I, I probably should wait and get my highlights in. But anyway, there's the eye of the wave. I can put some of these darks right against that, right up in here. Because that original ocean color wasn't the darkest color, that's for sure. So we come back in and add that dark anywhere you need it. You don't need it everywhere though. Just here and there. That makes a big difference. Now with my detail brush, I'm gonna add in our smaller waves in the background. This is just a little bit of a light highlight color. Actually a little touch of yellow ochre in that. I'm being very careful. Of course, this is kind of a purpley tone back here and there's not that much paint. So I should be okay. Plus, who cares if I get green? Look at all the green that I've got. Green is not gonna hurt me today in this particular seascape. It's really not gonna ever hurt you in a seascape. Uh, under certain circumstances it might, but rarely. I guess if you had some sort of a sunset going. But today it's perfectly great. Now I'm gonna place in highlight for the foam areas. I'm doing this with my quarter inch brush, although I may want to stop here very shortly and get my three quarter brush. There we go. Just enough. I don't know that I need a whole lot, but just enough really to show hey, there's something going on here. It's not just flat. We're catching a little light down in here. So it's a little bit of a weird foam area. Um, this is like a foam, it's all connected kind of, so it's a little different. I just thought it'd be fun to do something a little different. But I might come back and I might add a, add a splash or something to this also. You know, uh, like sparkle the rim of it, I don't know. But the main bulk of it is really done just like this. Straightforward, very straightforward. 
Let's take a break from the ocean part. I'll probably come back and add some more detail. Certainly we'll do the flicking, you know, and some maybe some liner brush work and our rocks are gonna cover some of that splash, but that's not bad. It's kind of an interesting little wave shape today. But now I'm gonna get, first of all, my wet sand in here. And my wet sand basically is gonna be similar in color to what's going on up here. Just a little more, maybe my yellow ochre tone, there we go. Just match it loosely. That didn't actually hurt to grab a little bit of this and pull into it also. We'd always come back with a sharper line of shadow if we need it. So there you go, straightforward. Totally straightforward today. Over here, even just a little darker. Well, maybe not so much red. <laughs> there we go, we're gonna mix right here on the canvas. Now as you can see, I'm scrubbing in some yellow and orange. Just trying to get us some, some sand going here real quick. And then as we go out to the edges, I'm gonna darken that sand just a little so that you have your light in the center, obviously darker on the outside, that's a bonus. It just makes everything a little more interesting. I typically will do that in a painting. Just for sake of making it more interesting, making it a little bit oh, more dynamic, I guess, huh? There you go. A little purple in there just to tie in because I got so much purple out here. I'm gonna have some purple in the sand. And we can put little ripples over this if we want to. And then we'll do the same over here. Now I'm gonna paint very simple and basic rocks today. Of course, it helps tremendously that I've left this area open and I didn't fill it in with paint because now look, I can put just the tiniest little bit of black and brown across this and I need so little in order to cover. If I took my, my seascape and I put it all over this area, which you know you could do, the problem is you would, you'd have to really wipe it off good in order to get this dark paint to go over that light paint, but it's just so much easier, more straightforward, and better <laughs> if you just get in here and leave it open, plan ahead, sketch it out like I did there originally, just put it where you only need it. To me, it's way, way easier. There you go. I'll just paint in these rocks here. I've got some rocks over there I gotta paint in also just with this brown and black. And that'll be good contrast. Now, right up against these rocks, we're gonna need to splash in some splash. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna splash in some splash. Oh yeah. And just drag that up and into the rest of the painting. But then right over here on, on the bottom, and yeah, it's gonna mix, but who cares? Because we do want it, it'll look like it's transparent. You're seeing some of that rock underneath. That rock may grow, you know? And that is totally okay. And we can put final details on with the liner brush if we want to. If it just gets too wet and you don't wanna mess it up by wiping it off too much, just liner brush, don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. And maybe just a little, spot of this color right along here just to, to bring it together you know it it makes a difference now I've wiped this area off with a with a shop towel so I should be able to float some of my little ripples over this without mixing too much mud yeah that'll work just gets a, a little bit more detail incorporated into this area and that to me is all we need really. I'm just going around placing in little final touches and so on. I, do, I know we need to do the, the rock highlights, but just getting the, the waves sort of finished here in the foreground, the ocean part, the splashies that go up against the rock. I'm just gonna drop on a tiniest little bit of highlight. I, I don't wanna overdo. I think if I do too much, I'm gonna be disappointed. It'll be dizzy and just not very interesting. So it's only a little bit there. And I'll, of course, put some blue shadows and whatnot you know, in there, maybe some more color, you know. I don't need too much attention drawn to this area, but still gotta have some amount of color. And then right over here, cause our highlight source, or light source is there. So our highlight's gonna be on the, on the right hand side, kinda on the top. I don't, uh, used to be years, years ago, I would, um, I would really take that to the extreme and like totally change the light source. But now, if I have the light source in the middle of the painting, the highlights are mainly on the top of the objects. You can see that, see that even here, it's mostly on the top of that wave. Um, that just helps, you know. 
versus like splitting the canvas in half and left and right highlight. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. <laughs> there. Yeah, so we get some of the, just this first color in. And I'll go back, like I said, maybe add a couple colors just in the same way. Nothing, nothing too crazy here. But it does look good. Just shaping, you know, shaping the rocks with the light. And leaving plenty of shadows, a fairly shadowy painting. We don't want to lose those shadows, they're so nice. Now we're coming to my favorite part here of a seascape painting, which is to, to use the fan brush here and flick all these little dots of white paint, the light paint, just mixed up a peach color. I've got it down there, it's thinned down, but it's not as thin as the liner brush, because that would be too thin. I'm just gonna flick it everywhere. If I get it somewhere where I don't want it, I'll just, just touch it with a clean brush and it will be erased totally. There we go. Now up in through here, lots of this. You can basically highlight the whole wave with this if you wanted to, and I've done paintings like that, but uh, I'm actually very pleased with my highlights, so I don't want to cover it all. But this creates a, a misty look when you stand back. You'll notice it kind of looks misty. When you come close, you'll see the individual dots of the spray of the ocean. I think both effects are neat. I think it looks good when you're far away, and I think it looks good when you're close. And I think it's pretty easy. <laughs> the only trick is test it on your palette. Make sure you've got what you like before you put it on your canvas, so that it saves you from having to remove and redo. <laughs> Which, you know, if you have to remove and redo, it's not the end of the world. The, uh, the thicker you have it to a point, then the smaller your dots. The, the thinner the paint, the larger your dots. To a point. That's always, you know, to a point. You can get it so thick it won't come off. <laughs> or you get it so thick it comes off in one big piece, you know what I mean. There you go. Now the last thing I'm going to do up here is create a couple of birds larger birds than I sometimes will do. There we go. Just one or two. I've got my hand kind of braced on the side of the easel there. I'm just dropping in a couple of birds and then we can do some more. Well, maybe should we do three? We'll do three and then I'll just kind of go around the painting adding some little bits and pieces of detail where we need. This is hard because I got that light. I can't really see them, but I'm, I'll fix them if they're not good <laughs> when I go back and look at them. And then uh, maybe just bring in some detail, like a sharp line right under this wave. Anything you don't like, you just touch it again with that clean little fan brush or something. Just touch it with anything that's clean and it'll just melt into the painting and you won't have to uh, worry about it. There you go. Look at this. There, so we're getting, that's just probably enough right there. I like these little dark ones. You could do light ones. I don't know that it's necessary. And then in here, just a few little ripples and whatnot. This is really pretty detailed. I think that the little dots went a long way. Well, that about wraps up this painting for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It was definitely a little bit different, but a lot of fun. I like this particular color palette. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.